Hi, this is Tom from ZeroDefinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through carotid artery stenosis. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroDefinals.com slash carotid artery stenosis or in the vascular surgery section of the ZeroDefinals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Carotid artery stenosis refers to narrowing of the carotid arteries in the neck usually secondary to atherosclerosis. Plaques build up in the carotid arteries, reducing the diameter of the lumen. There is a risk of parts of the plaque breaking away and becoming an embolus, travelling to the brain and causing an embolic stroke. The risk factors for developing carotid artery stenosis are the same as for atherosclerosis and arterial disease in other areas, such as age, male sex, smoking, hypertension, poor diet, reduced physical activity, and raised cholesterol. Patients who have a transient ischemic attack or a stroke are investigated for carotid artery stenosis usually with a carotid ultrasound scan. Patients with carotid artery stenosis are very likely to have arterial disease and atherosclerosis elsewhere. They're at a high risk of coronary artery disease and myocardial infarction, or heart attacks. Let's talk about the classification. The severity of carotid artery stenosis is categorised as mild when there's less than a 50% reduction in diameter, moderate when there's a 50 to 69% reduction in diameter, and severe when there's a 70% or more reduction in diameter. Next, let's talk about the presentation. Carotid artery stenosis is usually asymptomatic with no symptoms. Usually it's diagnosed after a transient ischemic attack or a stroke. A carotid bruit may be heard on examination. This is a whooshing sound heard with a stethoscope over the affected carotid artery, which is caused by turbulent flow around the stenotic area during systole, during contraction of the heart. Let's just talk about making the diagnosis. A carotid ultrasound scan is usually the initial investigation to diagnose and assess carotid artery stenosis. A CT or MRI angiogram may be used to assess the stenosis in more detail before surgical interventions. Next let's talk about the management. Conservative management involves addressing modifiable risk factors and medical therapy. This involves having a healthy diet and exercise, stopping smoking, good management of comorbidities such as hypertension and diabetes, antiplatelet medications such as aspirin, clopidogrel or ticagrelor, and lipid lowering medications such as atorvastatin. Surgical interventions are considered where there's more significant stenosis and the options are carotid endarterectomy or angioplasty and stenting. Endarterectomy involves an incision in the neck, opening the carotid artery and scraping out the plaque. This is the first line treatment for most patients who require surgical intervention. A key complication of the procedure is a stroke, which occurs in around 2% of cases. During an endarterectomy, nearby nerves can be injured, and this may be temporary or permanent. The symptoms depend on the nerve that's injured. If the facial nerve is injured, this can cause a facial weakness. Often the marginal mandibular branch is injured, causing drooping of the lower lip. If the glossopharyngeal nerve is injured, this can cause swallowing difficulties. If the recurrent laryngeal nerve is injured, which is a branch of the vagus nerve, this can cause a hoarse voice. And if the hypoglossal nerve is injured, this can cause unilateral tongue paralysis. Angioplasty and stenting is an alternative to endarterectomy. This is an endovascular procedure, 
which involves a catheter inserted into the femoral artery in the groin, passed through the aorta under X-ray guidance and up to the affected carotid artery. A balloon is inflated in the narrowed area to widen the lumen of the artery, and this is called angioplasty, and then a stent is left in place to keep the artery open, and this is called stenting. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, left a comment or subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much, it really helps. Zero to Finals is not just a YouTube channel. There's also a website with detailed notes, illustrations and questions, an Instagram account where new questions are posted every day to help you test your knowledge, books, flashcards and much more. I also have a personal channel where I share my thoughts and tips on learning medicine and you can find links to everything in the description of this video. See you next time.